please let this be a normal drawing video. Hello everybody, it is Chad here from Lootoons, and welcome back to another very exciting drawing video. And uh, today we are tackling the most requested topic for a 10 years later drawing video that I've ever received. That being the Magic School Bus Gang drawn 10 years later. Now, uh, Miss Frizzle's class being one of the most popular groups of animated youngsters, um, it's easy to understand why this would be a common request. Now, Frizzle's class has eight students in it, and usually I do about four characters for these drawing videos, but I said, what the heck? I put all eight in, so it's gonna be a little bit of a longer video, but uh, hey, I'm excited. As always, I'll be using my Wacom Intuos tablet to do all of the drawings and a copy of Flash CS5, which is the software that I do the drawings in. Of course, uh, I'm not sponsored by either of those things, they're just what I happen to have, but I wanted to say it aloud for you guys so you can know what I use to make all this stuff, even though I know you're still gonna ask. Also, as usual, I will be doing sort of commentary over top just to kind of explain why and how I think the characters may have ended up where they did. Um, these are all just speculations and fun predictions on my part. None of this is, uh, is real or canon or any of that. The Magic School Bus canon. I know we're all real sticklers about that. Uh, also, as a disclaimer, I am not the greatest artist in the world, so uh, some of my line work tends to be a little shaky here and there. But, uh, you know what, think of this more as just a conceptual experiment uh, than anything else. So enough chatter. Seat belts, everyone. I always wanted to say that. Okay, so let's jump in with one of the most famous, recognizable, well-known Magic School Bus characters, of course, with Arnold. And before we go too deep, uh, let's rewind and just sort of um, put the landscape out for what we're actually doing here. So projecting these characters 10 years into the future, I don't know exactly what year Miss Frizzle's class is in terms of grade school, but I think about 10 years into the future would put them at being around like age 19, 20, 21 ish. So that's kind of what I've shot for. So as for Arnold, I think he is a great character to project into the future because he's kind of this dorky guy in elementary school, which is super relatable. I know for me and a lot of people, when you look at like old pictures of yourself, you're like, wow, I was a real dork back then and people tend to grow out of it. And Arnold kind of has, but I think you still have to honor that awkwardness that he's got going on, which makes him kind of interesting actually to think about in the future because I talked about in my top 10 lovable losers countdown, which you can check out right here, which Arnold is on. Uh, he's got all of the dorky sort of awkward archetypes of that character, but he doesn't have the standard braininess to go along with it, which is kind of funny and makes him very lovable and likable. So I imagined while he's in college, he's switched majors a few times, not quite landing on anything too specific because unlike a lot of the other Magic School Bus characters, he doesn't have that strong focus, that archetype that they do. So maybe he's still not quite settled on, you know, what he's going to be, but he's having a good time. He's figuring it out and he combed his hair a little bit. And uh, basically, I, I, my best hope for Arnold is that he didn't end up going to the same college as Janet. Next up, we have Phoebe, who is most famous, of course, for always saying, at my old school. And as I watched a couple of old Magic School Bus episodes of making this video, it really is shocking how often she says this. But there is something that became very interesting to me, which is that as Phoebe grows older and moves on through her life, when she says, at my old school, which you know she's going to say, She'll be referring to like Miss Frizzle's class, like this will be her old school when she goes to high school and college, etc. And those schools will never be able to compare to this school. So everyone is in for a lot of um, at my old school. <laughs> well, she might actually be in a loony bin because when she says at my old school, uh, we went inside my classmate's body and people will be like, you're crazy. Anyway, Phoebe was kind of a loving, caring, naturey, kind of kind character, although very, very annoying and very kind of nitpicky. Uh, I imagine her kind of um, maybe doing like missionary work or enrolling in some kind of initiative where they save wildlife, something like that along those lines, which would tear her from the states possibly. Um, which I will touch on later, which may have some implications with her love life. Uh, it's a whole internet shipping thing. And, uh, well, yeah, we'll touch on that later. Next up, we have Ralphie. 
And, uh, you know, not everyone is meant to go to college. And I think that's great. And I think that Ralphie may end up being one of those guys. I think he's kind of going to just be this hometown sweetheart. Maybe he ends up working uh, some job that his dad has or something like that. He's still this lovable guy. I was reminded about a really cool aspect about the Magic School Bus as I was uh, watching some episodes for... Uh, for this drawing video where Ralphie is sort of imagining himself as this awesome baseball player but in the episode he gets like totally outclassed by Wanda who's like actually good at sports and uh, he's totally a great sport about it I mean everyone in Magic School Bus is really nice because it's like an educational show it's not like there's villains but Ralphie's a great sport about getting outclassed um, by Wanda at baseball and I think that speaks to his character and I think that sort of further makes me feel great about the fact that he's kind of this hometown hero, this hometown sweetheart um, that uh, I imagine like when all the kids come back home from school, Ralphie's there to like hang out with them. And next we have Dorothy Ann, who is your classic bookworm archetype, uh, often actually having plot lines where she lost books or was reading a book. <laughs> she, she was always centered around books to the best of my recollection. And, uh, I basically just pushed her even further. I'm sure she's in some Ivy League school, threw on a pair of specs for a little bit more of a conserv... Well, not more of a cons You can't get more conservative than a, a full-on turtleneck sweater. But, uh, you know, she's got a conservative look, and I'm sure she's somewhere in a library burying her nose where she has access to more books than uh, she can she can even get her hands on. She's probably the character that I took the least amount of liberties with in terms of their look and their vibe and their projection, but that's just kind of the way that uh, she landed for me. I didn't imagine that she would um, stray too far from uh, what she was already doing in the show. Next up, we have Keisha, who was my favorite character from the Magic School Bus, who I think gets way too little credit. Like in every Magic School Bus related video, I see like Arnold or Ralphie or Carlos in the thumbnails, but I think Keisha was the best character because she didn't really have an archetype. She was just kind of like a sarcastic dick in a way. Like she wasn't a dick, but she was like a sarcastic kind of um, real character. She was like the most realistic character. And it made me really happy that Keisha's drawing ended up being probably my favorite of the lot. I mean, there's a couple that I really like, but Keisha's turned out great. I imagined her as like, you know when you get to college and there's that one girl who's just really cool, like she knows all the coolest music, she's like into all of the coolest things. To me, like that's Keisha. So I, I, I thought that her drawing ended up looking great. She looks cool. She looks like the sarcastic sort of like down to earth character that Keisha is in the show. And don't worry, it's not lost on me at all how deep I'm digging into these characters for a educational kids show but uh hey keisha keep doing what you're doing what you're listening to drake future oh wicked <laughs> that's so keisha and next we've got wanda famous for saying with the frizz and then um, everyone else says no way so anyway wanda is sort of best known for being the tomboy sort of the badass of the group she was the best at sports she was often kind of uh the leader of the group in a sense sort of charging in head first and um, I think much like Arnold uh, little girls who are tomboys much like Arnold is a little boy who's sort of a dork sort of outgrow those things in some sense but not entirely and I think Wanda at least in my universe has not entirely outgrown her tomboyishness and she's still very athletic but maybe not quite the tomboy she once was I imagine her still kind of being a badass, like a no-nonsense kind of tough guy, as it were. Wanda for the drawing experiment was really fun because it was a big departure, I thought, from her character to kind of grow her up. Some of the characters I kind of kept locked where they were, like Ralphie, he kind of got trapped in himself in a way, like he got trapped in his hometown, whereas Wanda kind of will have left and grown and become someone else, but still maintaining sort of that tomboyish, no-nonsense kind of uh, charm that she had with the frizz no way that's wanda baby let's move on <laughs> next up we have everybody's favorite classic character tim 
Yeah, you probably didn't even remember that guy's name was Tim, did ya? Well, that's because Tim was kind of the classic artsy one of the group, but he also was kind of boring and forgettable. Sorry, Tim. But hey, look, I've done you a huge service by reinventing you. You've gone to school. You're that artsy guy. You're smart. You're, you're talented. You've got everything going for you. And when you get to college, the ladies are gonna love you. But here's the thing, Tim. You have been in love with the same girl ever since you were in elementary school. And here's where I have to kind of break up this trajectory that I'm on to ask you guys, have you ever heard that Phoebe and Tim are like shipped together in the magic school bus mythos <laughs> in the memedom? Uh, yeah, type it in on Google. When I was looking for reference images for the characters, I discovered that there's some kind of a Phoebe and Tim shipping community. <laughs> it kind of weirded me out, blew my mind, but hey, I'm rolling with it. So if you look onto Tim's guitar case, he has etched in a P and T. If you go back to my Phoebe kind of uh, future predictions, she is off doing like missionary environmental stuff. So Tim is being this artsy guy at some kind of an arts college, playing guitar, writing, being an artist, what have you. Phoebe is off doing this. They're like this cute couple. They're the kind of couple that make you want to vomit because they're so cute. Will it work though? The long distance, will it get to them? Who knows? And last but never least, we have Carlos, always known for making that joke, making that pun, making that horrible comment that makes the whole class go. So the thing with Carlos is, despite how many horrible, horrible puns and jokes that he made, he was always kind of the heart of the group. They were never laughing at him, they were just kind of laughing with him, and he always just put his hands out. I had to keep him in the hands out shrugging pose, kind of looking around smiling, that's the classic Carlos pose. Um, I had to honor that pose by just sort of thinking, he's just soaking in the love of everyone around him, and I think as he grows up, he's going to go to some... California College, where he's going to be the center of attention yet again, the social guy that everybody loves, wearing his sunglasses on his v-neck. But who knows what life will hold for Carlos. For now, I'm sure he's uh, hanging out on a beach, talking to some girls, telling some terrible jokes, yet getting laughs all the same, because that's what Carlos does. He's a charmer, he's social, he's charismatic, and everybody loves him. And uh, I think he truly was the heart of the show, in a way and kind of brought the group together um, from all of their disparate uh, dispositions. So it's a little bit deeper of a Carlos analysis than probably is needed, but well, there you have it. And that brings us to number eight. That brings us to the entire class. So here is an image of the entire group together. And uh, it's pretty cool, like when you see them all together, just to think of the whole class grown up. Uh, not to say I did such a great job, but Looking at it all together, I kind of think I did a great job. No, I kind of think uh, that it looks really cool just to see um, even one vision of what that might look like. Uh, and who knows where they would go from here. You could do another 10 years later, like some might be dead, some might be wed. <laughs> so there we go. The Magic School Bus Gang drawn 10 years later. I think it turned out really cool. I'm really excited about it, actually. And, uh, of course, we didn't have Miss Frizzle in the mix, but, uh, you know, some people speculate that she's some kind of a time warlock, so I suppose it's quite likely that she hasn't aged a day. So that is about all I've got for you guys today. Be sure to let me know down in the comments which other 10 years later drawing topics you would like to see covered. There are so many cartoons out there that would work perfectly for this, but I want to know which ones you guys want to see the most. You can also let me know over on Twitter, at Lootoons, or you can just say, hey, I always appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I will see you guys in the next drawing video or other video. You should check out all, all the videos, right? They're all pretty cool, at least I think. Magic School Bus? <laughs>